This is a group of white sharks in close proximity to each other. If you look closely, you will also see the shadows of rays throughout the frame. It's a likely scenario that up until now wasn't really seen in this manner. That doesn't mean it hasn't been studied. Scenes like this can raise many questions about the social dynamics of sharks and their hunting tactics. That's exactly why I sat down with Dr. Yanis Papastamatiu, a shark scientist at Florida International University specializing in shark predation behaviors. Are sharks able to work together in their hunting tactics? Look at this instance. You'll see one shark scares up a ray, and the other two sharks are in close proximity to the action. Dr. Yanis, along with his group of scientists, recently released a study titled Social Dynamics and Individual Hunting Tactics of White Sharks Revealed by Biologging. This study examines the social associations of a group of white sharks at Guadalupe Island, Mexico. The study suggests that white sharks associate with other individuals so they can inadvertently share information on the location or remains of large prey. In other words, the sharks may not be actively working together, but they may be staying in close proximity to each other as an added benefit to enhance their success. Look at this scene, the amount of rays. And lurking nearby, a group of white sharks. Does this suggest the sharks are working together? Not necessarily. According to the study, many associations are likely random, but there is evidence of stronger associations. We know white sharks visit shallow areas to forage on rays in Southern California. It is after all what's been suggested as a preferred choice meal among the juvenile population. But capturing the success rate of a predation attempt is an elusive piece of data. I've often observed white sharks forage on rays in these shallow areas. Still, even getting an estimated success rate is a challenge, but I'm compiling a vast amount of observations that could shed some light into their tactics, both socially and individually. Take this series of events, for instance. This white shark is traveling through relatively clear water. Note how it scares up a host of rays, guitar fish, and leopard sharks. The result is a cloud of murky water as each fish kicks up sand. The shark passes through multiple times, seemingly scaring up all the fish, each time making the water more murky. Then it happens. You see a burst of speed by the shark. Presumably, a predation attempt. Eventually, the shark appears to dig its nose into the sand, creating even harder to see conditions. Did we just witness a foraging technique? It's interesting to think about, yet it's an example of just how hard it is to capture the event itself, especially if the sharks are indeed using the cloudy water to their advantage. Cloudy water that in this instance may have been created inadvertently but the result could present a hunting advantage. But what about their methods of hunting larger prey, specifically large marine mammals? The study does indicate that there is evidence that white sharks form non-random social associations and may remain in proximity to each other to take advantage of pinniped kills. As white sharks mature, they graduate from rays to pinnipeds, but evidence suggests that there is a learning curve. Here's a scene I filmed of a lone sea lion and a larger juvenile shark engaging each other. The shark obviously reacts, but the action is lost to the depths below. But just as observations I showed you previously of a juvenile shark inadvertently using cloudy water to gain an advantage, I made some recent observations that involve bait balls, social proximity, and possibly a new behavior never seen before. This is a larger juvenile white shark traveling through a bait ball. When I first filmed these scenes, I was in complete awe of the sheer beauty of the sight. The sharks are actively pursuing bait balls, and in many cases turning right into them instead of avoiding them. But I soon wondered, what's going on here? The sharks are not feeding on the bait balls. But there's also another trend that can be noted, and you can see it in this frame. 
Notice the sea lion. Where there are bait balls, there are sea lions. Could this be a hint? Again, I must stress, these are observations and trends, not explanations. We will let the scientists offer those. But you see it here again. Notice the sea lion. As I pull the camera back, you can also notice the bait ball. Now, watch as the shark turns toward the bait ball. Eventually, it goes right through it. And here, another example, a sea lion at the top of the frame, a bait ball and two sharks. Once again, the shark passes through the bait ball. A mundane coincidence, or is there more to it? Just to be clear, these are merely observations. They are not interpretations. But I believe observations like this open the doors for a study into the behaviors documented. So, instead of focusing on the sharks, I started to focus on the sea lions. Do you see what's happening here? This sea lion is gliding through the bait ball. It's like art in nature. But not far away, a white shark cruises behind the cover of two bait balls. Is this a strategy by coincidence, or is there something more to it? The seal is preoccupied with chasing a meal of its own, and the shark may be taking advantage of it. As the sea lion continues chasing fish, the white shark makes the dive. and the following interaction ensues. In a classic defense strategy, the sea lion turns the tables on the situation. The sea lion then begins chasing the shark. It's a remarkable series of events, a dance between two foes rarely seen on camera, and one that can say so much more about sharks than towing a decoy behind a boat. Could white sharks be using bait balls as a possible hunting advantage? It's certainly interesting, and more data, again, will have to be captured to be certain. Here's a couple photos of a predation attempt right through a bait ball. I was unfortunately in photo mode when this happened, but it was another instance where the shark actively made a move toward a sea lion that was preoccupied in the bait ball. Could this actually be common behavior? What is common is that sharks do engage with sea lions and seals often. Many of the scars I see on larger juveniles and subadult sharks are indicative of sea lion encounters, while other scars, well, I just can't seem to explain what may cause them. It's clear that sharks engage with each other, but the bait ball behavior is a mystery still left to solve. In the meantime, observing the interesting shark behavior is high on my list. Not only is it beautiful to see, but it's also very informative to see large sharks, sharks that pursue marine mammals, so close to the shore. It gives us clues as to which sharks are engaging in the possible bait ball behavior. That's likely a story in itself. It is not rare to see multiple sharks near bait balls, but it does appear only a specific size shark is being drawn into them. Again, as with all observations, more data will be needed to fully understand the dynamic going on here. One of the main points in Dr. Yanis's study is that the predation attempts among the handful of sharks studied at Guadalupe Island are occurring at depth. Despite my many hours of filming sharks, I've yet to see a successful predation on a sea lion at the surface. The dive is visible, but the action is lost to the low visibility below. Dr. Yanis suggested to me that successful predation is very hard that it's quite common for large predators to have a low success rate. It doesn't fully rule out predations on the surface. I believe they still happen, but I'll have to keep observing and documenting to prove they do.
the ray gets kicked up right there. Mm -hmm. Do and the then, others notice it? Yeah. See, these other these others are noticing it. This one does. See, he's coming back. So this is the one that kicked it up, and then this one came back to the same area. Right. 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 Yeah. So that's kind of how we we currently imagine white shark social hunting could work mm -hmm. but not necessarily working together but by staying in proximity to each other it's beneficial right mm -hmm. because one if one shark does spook away gets away i i have a chance of catching it and you've kind of done some of the work for me mm -hmm. uh, and then vice versa that could be enough to have driven this evolution uh of this behavior where they're somewhat social